Now here are three things you need to know right now. There is no other way to put it, folks. Today's disaster story is department store retailer Kohl's. The company cut its full year earnings outlook to $2.80 a share to $3.20 a share from $6.45 to $6.85 a share previously after a very brutal second quarter. Julia, I'm keeping my intro very short here and brief because we have been very, very critical of this company, but this is a terrible quarter. Mm -hmm. And if you go back, really a terrible job by this company's board of directors, terrible job by the management team. It's a quarter like this that usually gets a CEO canned. It is unclear to me how Michelle Gass even gets to have a name on this press release. It was a bad quarter of a company that botched a sale process just a couple months ago, yeah. reportedly getting offers of over $60. $60. Now, we reached out to Kohl's this morning, sent them an email. We asked Michelle to come on here, explain what in the world is going on. Because I've been talking to shareholders of Kohl's this morning, and they are totally dismayed. Uh, one shareholder told me that um, the management team is absolutely inept. And he has a point after this quarter and the warning. Okay, I'm not going to offer any recommendation. I don't know who remains a shareholder of this thing, first of all. Like, what? Hey, BlackRock, uh, BlackRock and Vanguard own close to 20% of Kohl's, well, and now it's on them to put the heat on this board. Well, These BlackRock, guys are terrible. BlackRock and Vanguard, uh, listen, they don't own it because they necessarily made the decision to own it. Mm -hmm. Kohl's is still a part of various indices. They have big ETF and index businesses. It's not like they said this is a great bet, and that's why they put money into Kohl's necessarily. It's because they are indexed to it. Uh, when you talk about the forecast, I just want to put a fine point on that forecast yes. because it was so dramatic, the cut to the forecast. The company is now saying for the full year, earnings per share are going to be $2.80 to three hundred twenty. The prior forecast, six forty five dollars to six eighty five. dollars and then you see the net sales uh, forecast as well, now expecting a drop in sales of 5 to 6%, which is just incredible. Now, the reason I perhaps don't get quite as exercised about I don't know why I get, do get as you so do. I don't know. Uh, well, because, you know, I get it's it. You're a former, me, but, former yeah. retail analyst. Like, yeah. I get it. This You're passionate about this area. I don't get as exercised about Kohl's for a couple reasons. Even though, yes, BlackRock and Vanguard hold it, it's not that widely held. Retailers, as a rule, are not that widely held. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for example, when you have a big company or you have an Elon Musk or someone like that coming out and making commentary that then has a big ripple effect because they have a big reach, that that kind of stuff gets me worked up. I was thinking about this this morning. Why you get so worked up about Kohl's? It was in the newsroom. It was very clear. Like, what? I was really, oh, I know. really quite frustrated. But this is why I don't get quite so worked up about But, you know, Kohl's. I think where my anger comes from, it is watching management teams, not just in retail, doing a horrible job for shareholders, not just institutional. There are a lot of retail investors that are waking up and coming on the Yahoo Finance platform, going to lose their shirt because of the terrible decisions by CEO Michelle Gass and chairman of Kohl's, Peter Boneparth. Uh, this company was pushed to sell itself by Engine Capital in December of 2021. Stock was at $48. Right. Uh, they were exploring a sale throughout this tire uh, for the most part of this year. Got reportedly bids in the $50 to $60 range. Uh, and I think they even had a deal in place with Franchise Group, which then pulled its offer. They had an offer to take the company private for $60. You know, your job as a board of directors is to maximize shareholder value. These guys have destroyed the company. Now you can get a stock trading, what, below 30? You know, I will say, if you look across the department store landscape, it's not like it is strewn with success stories right sure. now, right? It, it, so you're talking about a, an area, an industry that is already challenged, right? You're Even, you know, Macy's has come back from the lows, but it's really just a less worse story for many of these big department store companies. So you have that environment, and then you have this sort of questionable decisions by management layered on top of that. But to be sure, it's not like it's, mm -hmm. you know, wine and roses out there for their competitors. No, and, it, and it's just bizarre to me, and, you know, just my last point here, Julie, it's, uh, I, I've not seen a story like this where there's been very changes, lot, not a lot of changes in the executive suite where you can come out here, continue to disappoint on earnings, badly miss your forecasts, continue to come out and warn, not do well inside of a two-year period post-pandemic where people are buying clothes again. And you are, I've been critical of Macy's too, but people have gone back to Macy's and right. buy clothes yeah. and they have been able to forecast results and not come out here and warn. I, this is a bad story. I mean, this is a bad story. Well, let's there has talk, to be changes.